Welcome to the KZGN News. Today we'll bring you up to date on the city's Measure L committee report, more from the last council meeting, and water district news and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. I'm Tom Whitnick, and here's what's news in Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. At last Wednesday's council meeting, the Measure L Committee gave their annual report to the council and the people of Ridgecrest. The presentation was opened by Chairman Scott Garber that gave a brief overview of the presentation and how they prepared the report. The report is a 13-page document. Here's an abbreviated version of the report. The Measure L Committee is required by law to provide an annual report to the people of Ridgecrest, providing information to the public how the city council spent the funds raised by the sales tax increase implemented by initiative in 2012. Measure L generated approximately $2.5 million in fiscal year 2013 to 2014. Measure L expenditures for that period totaled $2.19 million. Public safety, which really means the police department, expended $1.3 million and the public works department expended $840,000. There was a carryover to FY 2015 of $400,000. The reported allocation of funds to the police department and the public works department was determined by the committee to be in compliance to the promised use of the funds in the passing the ta tax initiative. Adequate financial procedures were in place to provide accounting visibility of both the monthly Measure L receipts from the state and detailed ledger entries indicating only public works and police department expended the Measure L funds. The police department primarily used funds towards salaries for 13 employees. No capital expenditures were spent this year. The Public Works Department expended funding for street maintenance and construction on several roads. In addition, funds were used to qualify for federal matching funds at a rate of 8 to 1 and 10 to 1. In other words, 8 to 10 federal dollars were matched for every dollar on Measure L funds. Measure L also partly funded a reported 1.8 miles of road resurfacing. And their summary read as follows. Measure L funds were allocated entirely to public safety and public works in fiscal year 2013 to 2014. Whether these funds were used to backfill other departments was not investigated for this report. Annual spending on street maintenance was less than the city's annual required resources of 1.5 million to sustain the current city streets. Recommendations from the board were, based on the estimated need of $1.5 million per year to sustain street maintenance, the committee recommends the council to increase the funding level for that purpose. They also should determine whether the fiscal year carryover funding can be minimized or expended. So that's an abbreviated read of their report. The entire report can be obtained by contacting the city clerk at City Hall. We at KZGN thank the Measure L Committee for doing a great job, as our eyes and ears on the council. At the council meeting, Mayor Breeden announced that the council would be holding their first town hall meeting. The meeting will be held Wednesday, June 10th at City Hall. Well, that is a while off yet. She is announcing it now to give people time to think about the proposed topics. The topics for discussion are, one, what do you think the city should do for economic development? The second topic, how can the city better serve you? These are pretty good topics for discussion, especially the economic development one. There are so many possibilities for this topic. Also at the meeting, former mayor and councilman Chip Holloway, presented the representing the Chamber of Commerce, presented the council a bill for about $2,500. About a month ago, the chamber pointed out to the council that right now is the time to refinance the former Ridgecrest Redevelopment Agency loans. That refinancing them now could save the city about $2,500 per month on the loan. The chamber said that for every month that they did nothing, that they would bill the city the savings they are missing out on. At that time of presentation, the council said they would look into it. But to date, there has been no agenda item on the subject. Now, truth be told, the chamber does not expect the city to pay the bill. They are only making the point that every month they do nothing, they are wasting $2,500. The council responded that they actually are looking into the idea that the finance manager is currently researching it to bring it to the council soon for consideration. So they expect it will be on the agenda soon. 
In Indian Wells Valley Water District news, General Manager Don Zadiba responded to the California State Water Resource Control Board restrictions mandated at their May 5th meeting. Zadiba explained restrictions on urban potable water 25%. Use has been in development for weeks. Amid a four-year California drought condition and 5% of normal snowpack in the Sierras. Despite pushback on initial April 7th draft restrictions from the public as well as several urban water suppliers, including an email Zadiba sent on behalf of the Water District, the board reissued April 17th draft regulations increasing the number of conservation tiers from four to nine. Zadiba sent a six-page letter to the state board explaining the reasons for the Water District having a residential gallons per capita per day, landing us in the proposed ninth and highest tier. It requires a 36% conservation target. Zadiba pointed out that the proposed conservation target doesn't recognize the 20% usage reduction achieved from 2007 to 2013. He explained what the State Board final mandate means concerning the Water District conservation target. He said, it means the state will be monitoring our water usage from June through November and comparing it to the same period of time in 2013, the year being used as the baseline. In anticipation and response to this requirement, the Board of Directors adopted Ordinance 97, an emergency water conservation regulation, at their April 13th meeting to implement the mandatory actions enacted by the State Board. He said, many of these actions are carryovers from the restrictions implemented last year. The most significant new action is the implementation of a three-day-per-week water schedule. Outdoor landscaping is an estimated 50 to 65 percent of residential water use and is the largest opportunity to attain our 36 percent conservation standard reduction. Mailers were sent to all water district customers containing water and schedule information and on the new cash for grass program being implemented. The focus will be on compliance, Zadiba said, is critical. We all cooperate to achieve our assigned conservation target. The Water District will report to the state monthly. Enforcement actions are to be announced. Stay tuned for news from Kern County when we come back. In Kern County news, this is a reminder about the Kern County Board of Supervisors special board meeting coming here next Wednesday. The meeting will be to brief the public on the final version of the staff recommendation on the Indian Wells Valley Land Use Management Plan. The purpose of the plan is to try and slow down the water overdraft problem we have in the valley. We expect there will be substantial public input about the plan. There are staunch supporters of the plan, while there are some that do not agree with the plan at all. Whether you know it or not, if this plan passes, almost everyone in the valley will be affected, some more than others. But the impact could be felt by all. So if you want to learn the details of the plan or want to make comment, make sure you put this meeting on your calendar. The meeting will be next Wednesday, May 13th at 1 in the afternoon in the Ridgecrest City Council Chambers at City Hall. Again, take special note, the meeting is in the afternoon at 1 p.m. Don't think it'll be an evening meeting. In Police Department news, well, the last evening the Ridgecrest police, police Department had their annual open house. Doors open to the public to come in, see the department, meet the officers, and get to know them better. They had a police canine demonstration. Watch this video. Oh, yeah. Wow. He wants to go back now. Good boy! Good boy! You got him! Good boy! Good 
Now you gotta roll around your stomach. The pain will stop and you can fly. <laughs> stop by my dog. Zach, I see your hands up. What? Ouch! <laughs> Sit. Plots. Hey, bad guy, don't run. Stop right there. I'll send the dog. Don't run. Stop. I'll send the dog. He's got a lot of strength. It's all leverage. It's all leverage. In addition to the canine demonstration, they had firearms and taser demonstrations, as well as the jail was open for viewing. They had the many different police department vehicles on display as well. There were free hot dogs provided by the Optimist Club. The youth police explorers sold baked goods and drinks and other snacks as a fundraiser for their costs. Additionally, the police and citizens together, packed volunteers, were available for information and recruitment. Even though it got cold and windy, the public turnout was great. The highlight everyone loved was the police dog demonstrations. It was very impressive how the dog on a command jumps out of the vehicle and chases down a running bad guy. Now, a fun story from KZGN Field reporter Tanya Pyle. Ever wonder if there is any actual science behind the popular five-second rule for eating fallen food on the floor? Five-second rule. You ever hear that one? Tanya asked Leslie O'Neill, infection preventionist at the Ridgecrest Regional Hospital, for her take on the five-second rule. There is no five-second rule, O'Neill said, but people will do what people will do. People may be guilty of using safety factors as depicted in the Forbes online graphic, such as for whether the cat licked it or whether someone is watching. These factors are best meant for comic relief. O'Neill told KZGN, in fact, the University of Illinois conducted a study on the five-second rule. Their 2006 study involves swabbing floors and halls. Results revealed not a lot of pathogens were found, but alluded to the fact that pesky pathogens were there. A College of Agriculture Consumer Environmental Sciences study conducted in 2003 determined Food dropped on a floor that can, contains microorganisms can be contaminated upon contact. O'Neill maintains, clearly, risk is involved once something touches the ground. It becomes contaminated with the dirt and germs on that surface. She reminded us of the Center of Disease Control Statistics where 76 million Americans contract foodborne illnesses annually from improperly handled food. Approximately 300,000 of those are hospitalized. Those at high risk of illness and even death from food contaminations are children and the elderly. O'Neill said, certainly the longer something remains on the ground, the more opportunity there is for it to become contaminated by bacteria. In that same way, that leaving something out of the refrigerator encourages the growth of bacteria. We live in a world full of germs. Some of them are very harmful. O'Neill stressed the necessity of simple hand washing before eating, before touching our eyes or nose, and after using the restroom. According to O'Neill, hand washing is the single most important thing we can do to protect ourselves, together with following good proper food handling and storage guidelines. When it comes to eating food falling on the floor, once it hits the deck, it might be best to remember the old adage, when in doubt, throw it out. So I guess the five second rule isn't very healthy. In events for this weekend, the 10th Annual Biker Blessing will take place on Saturday, May 9th from 10 to 2 p.m. This will be the 10th Annual Biker Blessing. All motorcyclists assemble at the Calvary Chapel off College Heights Boulevard. After the prayer service and blessing, all the motorcycles will be started and a procession will be made through town. The route will come down College Heights Boulevard to South Tiny Lake Boulevard. Then the procession will proceed north on Tiny Lake Boulevard through town to Inyokern Road. Then they turn west on Inyokern Road to the end of the route. If you've never had a chance to see this parade of motorcycles, it is a sight to see. Kids love it as well. Hundreds of motorcycles rumbling along is really neat. Viewers can line up along China Lake Route. For more information, contact 760-375-3133. Now in case of Jan's continuous effort to provide news and information you've asked for, here are today's local gas prices for your information. 
and they are skyrocketing now. As of this morning, Ridgecrest is ranging from 345 to 399. Lancaster is now from 355 to 405, and over four dollars. The LA Valley area is 359 to 385, and the Bishop area 343 to 385. We have four stations coming in at the 345 figure. The cheapest price in the Lancaster area remains more than Ridgecrest. All other areas we monitor are more than Ridgecrest as well. Congratulations to the gas station for maintaining good prices. Tune in with us three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We at KZGN always suggest you shop locally and fill up here to support our local economy. Remember, when you pay sales tax out of town, you're helping those cities pave their streets instead of here. Stay tuned for sports and weather after the break. Thanks for staying with us. Let's go to Keith for the weather. Thank you, Tom. From the National Weather Service, scattered to widespread thunderstorms are expected to develop Friday evening across parts of the southern plains. Some of the storms will become severe, capable of producing damaging wind, very large hail, and possibly tornadoes. The greatest threat is across parts of the central and southwestern Oklahoma and extreme northern Texas, where a moderate risk area is in place. Looking at our regional map, Warm temperatures on the east coast, mild temperatures through the central and western states. For us locally, tonight a chance of showers and thunderstorms before 9 p.m., then a chance of showers from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Mostly cloudy with a low around 50 degrees, west wind 10 to 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 20 miles per hour. Chance of rain 30%. On Saturday, mostly sunny with a high near 80, west-southwest wind 5 miles per hour. Saturday night, mostly clear with a low around 55 west-northwest wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. On Mother's Day, will be sunny with a high near 86 west-northwest wind 5 miles per hour. Sunday night, mostly clear with a low around 57 west wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. And on Monday, sunny with a high near 86 south wind 5 miles per hour. KZGN viewer Aaron Hersom submitted this picture to us on Facebook this morning of the low clouds and snow up in the mountains. Thanks, Aaron. If anyone wants to submit photos, please send them to us at info at kzgn.net. And that is your KZGN forecast. Have a great weekend and a happy Mother's Day to all mothers out there. Now back to Tom with the rest of your KZGN news. Thanks, Keith. Now let's go to Tom Heck for sports. And a pleasant Friday afternoon to everybody. Let's start with the local high school sports baseball note. Yesterday, Burroughs High Baseball on the road. They dropped a 2-0 decision to Serrano. Now, on Tuesday, they defeated Serrano 2-0. Now the record 17-5 overall, 6-2 in the league for the Burroughs. They'll have one week left of regular season. Then they'll go into the playoffs as either the number two seed or perhaps the number three seed. Being number one, they would need some help with some wins and losses from other teams. But they're looking right now, they're guaranteed at least a playoff. They'd sure like to get a home game if possible. All right, the Dodgers beat Milwaukee 14-4 to yesterday. They put the four-game set in Wisconsin. The Angels were up 2 to nothing going into the ninth inning. Houston Street entered the game and couldn't hold on to the lead. He blew a save for the second night in a row. And the Angels drop a 3-2 decision to the Astros. The Astros now with a six-game lead over the Angels. The two teams play again tonight. They're in the midst of a four-game series. Hector Santiago, the Angels starter, went seven innings, only gave up two hits. Looked very good. Joe Smith came on in the eighth inning, did a pretty good job. And then Houston Street just couldn't hold the lead. All right, also yesterday, the Cardinals beat the Cubs. Cardinals, best record right now in baseball. The Pirates beat the Reds. Detroit wins again. Kansas City, who leads the Central, beats Cleveland. New York over Baltimore. The Rangers, the Rangers now playing some good baseball. They beat Tampa Bay 4-3. to The Rangers have a four-game winning streak. The Marlins over the Giants. The Giants' winning streak is snapped. And Arizona, the Diamondbacks scoring some runs down there in Arizona. They beat San Francisco yesterday 11 to nothing all right in the NBA tonight the Clippers and Houston the series tied at one that game at Staples Center at 730 also tonight Cleveland and Chicago now on Saturday the number one Hawks will take on Washington in Washington John Wall appears to be out for the rest of the playoff season 
the star guard for Washington, unable to go with some fractured bones in his left wrist. Boy, that's a shame because I think if Wall's healthy, Washington would have probably beaten Atlanta. The way it is right now, I don't think they can beat the Hawks without him, although the series is tied one apiece. All right, Tom Brady, did he or didn't he deflate a gate? Did he really know the balls were deflated, or did he not know the balls were deflated? Story at 10. If you tune to any talk show right now, you can listen in. There's been people mentioning that he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame, that he should be suspended for a year. You know what the solution would be? Really simple. Everyone used the same game ball, like they do in Pop Warner. They don't argue about deflating gate and Pop Warner. Just use one football. And if it was under deflated, does that make a big difference? I don't think so. But a lot of people do. Use one ball. NHL. The Western Division semifinal. The Blackhawks sweep Minnesota. They win last night in the Twin Cities 4-3. to They will take on the winner of Calgary and the Ducks that are playing their series out right now with the Ducks leading that series. All right, fifth grade basketball league tonight. They culminate up at Saracoso. The girls, Fowler and Las Flores at 4.30. Inyo Kern and Charter at 4.30. St. Anne's and Pierce at 6.30 with the girls. Gateway and Richmond at 6.30. The winners will play tomorrow. And the losers, their season is done. In the boys, Richmond and Inyo Kern at 5.30. Fowler and Pierce at 7.30. Las Flores and St. Anne at 5.30. And Charter and Gateway at 7.30. Richmond is the number one seed. They won the regular season for the boys. And Fowler is the number one seed for the girls. They also won the regular season in the girls' division. The championship games will be tomorrow starting at 9 o'clock in the morning. Come on out and support the 5th grade league up at Saracoso College. St. Anne's does a great job helping supply volunteers and other folks for the event. That's your sports for the weekend. I'm Tom Heck for KZGN. So that's the news for today. All of us at KZGN TV know you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing KZGN TV, Rich Chris' only locally owned community TV station.